Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, mortgage rates are skyrocketing. Home sales are plunging. Price cuts for new listings surging. Demand is being crippled. Inventory is starting to increase. These are all great signs their housing market is starting to transition back into a buyer's market. But, but today we're going to talk about data surrounding bidding wars and home buying competition. So we're going to unpack an article from Redfin titled housing market competition dropped to a 15 month low in May. So we now have an overwhelming amount of different data points showing the trends of the housing market. So really the question is this, in your opinion, is the housing market strong and can it handle this or is the housing market weak and is it going to fall apart? I believe the housing market is weak because the way that the bubble was created, but regardless, you guys, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. My bio is as a realtor, loan officer, and instructor in Texas. So I love real estate, but this is my personal YouTube channel and I am working hard to get you guys out a video a day. So if you can, please like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please, you guys comment. I absolutely love our community on real estate mindset, but let's get started on this article right now. The article starts. Surging mortgage rates and home prices are causing more buyers to back off. That means sellers are less likely to receive multiple offers, but they are also face less competition when they buy their next home. Here's what's interesting. Nationwide, 57.8% of home offers written by Redfin agents faced competition on a seasonally adjusted basis in May, the lowest level since February 2021. That's down from a revised rate of 60.9% one month earlier and a, and a pandemic peak of 68.8% one year earlier and marks the fourth consecutive monthly decline. On an unadjusted basis, May's bidding war rate was 60.8% down from 67.8% in April and 71.8% in May of 2020. 21. Now, even though all of these trends and all of this data is pointing to good signs of a transition into a buyer's market, it's also telling me it's still not time to buy. I want the competition to be much lower, which also means that if you're thinking about selling, you may have time to do that still and still get a super good deal for your house. So on one hand, there's still time to sell. On the other hand, I don't quite think it's time to buy, even though all of these trends are showing us it's going to be time to buy soon, right? It's just not yet. The housing market takes time for things to change. It is a beast, right? It is huge. And there's so many local markets. Local markets adjust differently. But let's continue on with this article right now. Now, here's a chart, y'all, from Redfin about home buyer competition. And this is what it says. Home buyer competition eases further in May. Monthly share of Redfin home offers that price that face competition. Now, this is for Redfin. Redfin's a huge real estate company. So we can look at their data and you know fairly confidently, but as you can see, competition is declining. And usually in May, as you can see here, from February to May, competition goes up. And you can see it here too. May, it starts May right here. It starts going up. But Unlike the last two years, we're hitting May and competition is going down. But as you can see, April 2020, it only goes to April 2020. It was skyrocketing. We need to be under 30%, in my opinion, which means 30% of listings get more than one offer uh, on their home. So this is a great trend. I think that next, I think this is going to continue to plunge, you guys. And as soon as we have a confirmed recession, right? I think we're in recession now, but as soon as we have a confirmed recession, recession, I think it's going to plunge even faster. In fact, I think all of the trends of the data is actually going to start speeding up as soon as we're in that confirmed recession. And in my opinion, home buyer competition needs to be well under 25%. I'm just throwing that out there for right now, but I think in order for things to get really good for us under 25%, but let's continue on with this article right now. The typical home in a bidding war received 5.3 offers in May, down from 6.8 in April and 7.1 in May of 2021, according to the data submitted by Redfin agents. An offer 
An offer is considered part of the bidding war if a Redfin agent reported that it received at least one competing bid. The statistics in this analysis are subject to revision. Data below on property type and peer tier and metro area is not seasonally adjusted. Redfin's bidding war data goes back through April of 2020. Home buyer competition is cooling because rising mortgage rates and surging home prices have made home buying less feasible for many Americans. The typical monthly mortgage payment for a home buyer is now over $2,500 at the current 5.78% mortgage rate. That's up 49% from a year earlier when mortgage rates were 2.93%. Redfin economists expect the bidding war rate to fall below 50% by the end of this year. Homes are now getting one of three offers compared to five to 10 two months ago and as many as 25 to, to 36 months ago. Offers also aren't coming in as high above listing price as before. I recently listed a three bedroom, three bathroom home in a super cute neighborhood for $400,000 and it ended up going under contract for $12,000 above the list price with an inspection. Whereas three months ago, the buyer probably would have paid $60,000 over asking and waived the inspection. Thank goodness that is stopping. It's almost like people completely forgot about how the housing market works, how the fundamentals work. So to go $60,000 over over appraisal and over listing price and also waive your inspection. That is financial suicide. That is like blindfolding yourself and trying to throw a dart at a dartboard and you have to hit bullseye. If you don't hit bullseye, you lose all of your money, your life savings. That's what that is, right? In my opinion, it is absolutely awful. But remember, these trends are all going the direction that we want it to go as far as us wanting the housing market to show negative equity growth. These are absolutely great trends, but it's not there yet. So sit tight. Let's continue reading this article right now. We're going to take a look at the best and the worst cities as far as buyer's competition. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I've had people actually comment today from some of these cities saying they have not seen price cuts yet. So let's go over this. Okay. So in addition to seeing the largest year over year declines in competition, Riverside, Providence had the lowest overall bidding wars at 41 and 45%. Next came Olympia, where 47.2% of home offers written by Refn agents encountered competition in May. Rounding out at the bottom fifth were Honolulu and Minneapolis. So these are some of the cities that are cooling the fastest. We have now a California city, Southern California city and Riverside in here. But here are the cities that are not slowing down as quickly. These are the cities that are lagging behind. And I get a lot of comments from people in these cities saying, Travis, I don't see it yet. To which I respond, please, you guys stay patient. But look at this. Worcester had the highest bidding war rate at 81.8%. <clears throat> Shocking. And Las Vegas. Now I have a lot of people from Las Vegas. I see why things are so crazy. 74.5% of listings in a bidding war in Las Vegas. Insane. And Boston. Heart goes out to you, Boston, 72.6. Dallas, can't believe Texas is in here, especially Dallas, because they have the record most home building going on in Dallas. But whatever, 72.3% in Dallas. I feel so bad for Dallas. I'm super worried about Dallas now, as well as Austin. And Philadelphia at 69.3%. So... If you're in one of those cities that I just mentioned, you guys, like I said, stay patient. It will be our turn to purchase shortly, and you will see it hit your local metro area because no metro area is immune to a crash or recession. So overall, you guys continue to stay patient because that recession is right around the corner, as is buying opportunity. That happens in 2022 Mark my words, although I think in 2023, it's going to be even better, but it all starts in 2022. And that's as, in my opinion, that's as a result of the Federal Reserve not taking these actions in the beginning of 2021. If we wouldn't have let things completely go out of control in 2021, I don't think we're in this situation, but... It is what it is. So you guys, thank you for watching this video and thank you for taking this journey with me. And as always, if you're out there investing in real estate, I do wish you luck and I hope you win.